Watch out. I'm sorry. Twelve underrated modern B-movies that make for a fun movie night. The term B-movies might be used dismissively, but there is no denying the fact that these often turn out to be some of the finest entertainers. High on the concept and low on the budget, B-movies score low in terms of the crafts of filmmaking, but they compensate with their fun-filled narrative. While we have enjoyed some classics from the bygone era, Modern Times 2 have provided with some decent B-movies. In this video, we have brought together some of the modern-day gems from the B-movie world that capture the creative wonder of B-cinema while staying true to the righteous spirit. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Feast 2005 While people are having a good time at a remotely located bar, a newcomer storms in and advises the patrons to seal the place. According to him, deadly monsters are on the prowl, and they're all prepared to attack. The people inside must think of a strategy to defend themselves in the face of this sudden danger. Can they survive the attack of the hungry monsters? The reality show Project Greenlight that was conducted by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck had an interesting result in the form of this entertaining film. The plot is clever and innovative, and it doesn't make you feel like you're watching just another monster movie. An interesting aspect of the movie is that the characters have no names, but are referred to as their roles dictate. So, you have a hero. Honey Pie and Bozo, but as you wouldn't expect, they kill off the hero pretty quickly. The budget allotted was only about a million bucks, but the makers cleverly saved money by making sure that most of the film takes place within the bar itself. There's enough blood and gore to please the gore hounds, and overall, you're sure to have a wonderful time. The guest performance of Jason Mewes, who plays himself in the film, is a cherry on the cake. Feast had two sequels to follow up, but they couldn't match up to the brilliance of the original. <laughs> Bitch Slap 2009 Three smoking hot babes travel to a remote desert hideaway to steal a stash of diamonds worth $200 million from an underground kingpin. However, their mission goes for a toss when things soon spiral out of control. As more truths are revealed, allegiances change and characters are unmasked. Nothing is certain in this nail-biting thrill ride as the femme fatales fight it out in the middle of nowhere. In this hilariously contrived plot, the focus is mostly on the ladies who get into frequent erotic fights that involve them tearing each other's clothes off. One could term it as a trashy exploitation flick with action, cleavage, and women getting out of cars in slow motion. However, the film is extremely entertaining, and the efforts of the female leads do not go unnoticed. There are some unexpected twists and turns, while the plot is kept pretty simple. It's influenced by the schlock classics like Roger Corman and Russ Meyer back in the day, and it's handled by none other than Rick Jacobson, a man who has done some good work in the B territory with works like Episodes of Hercules, Xena Warrior Princess, Baywatch, and more. This movie is too much fun to ignore and features some talented B-list legends like Zoe Bell, Kevin Sorbo, and Lucy Lawless in minor roles. Family isn't everything. No, no, no. 
Hellride, 2008. Pistolero is the leader of a biker gang in Southern California. His girlfriend was murdered by the rival gang leaders, the Deuce and Billy Wings, who wanted to send a message to Pistolero. Now, the Deuce has moved from his biker gang to large-scale business, but when he returns to settle some unfinished work, Pistolero has his chance at revenge. He plans for a takeover and with his trusted companions, launch a scathing attack on the Deuce and his gang. It becomes a hardcore battle between the two forces and anyone can emerge victorious. The critics have been pretty harsh with this movie, but it's more of a tribute to the biker films of the 70s. Larry Bishop writes, directs, and stars in this movie, where the script and direction are indeed a bit lacking. It does appear to be cheesy and over the top, and at times, Hellride tries too hard to ape the movies from the past. But this is a movie that will grow on you with time, and unless you're comparing it with the Oscar-winning efforts, you can sit through the light entertainment on offer. The cast of Vinnie Jones, Julia Jones, and David Carradine provide good support to the efforts of Larry Bishop. It's believed that Quentin Tarantino was supposed to play a role in the movie, but he eventually just couldn't. However, he has some role to play in terms of the idea, because he watched The Savage 7 with Larry Bishop and planned to make the best biker movie ever. That may not have materialized, but if you're looking for a gritty, rough, and around-the-edges exploitation flick, this is just the one for you. Slavery and war crimes. What's the matter, Trevor? You get a dirty mug. Bounty Killer 2013 In a futuristic world, the corporations took over the world governments, and this resulted in fierce global battles that ruined society. In these dark times rises a force named the Council of Nine and it warrants death for all white-collar criminals. The bounty hunters from the organization compete against each other for the body count and keep adding to their fat stack of cash after eliminating their targets. These heroes are offering retribution for the survivors of the apocalypse and exterminating those responsible for such a condition. The film is based upon a graphic novel by Kickstarter Comics, and it offers a frenetic comic book style sci-fi action that will thoroughly entertain you. This is apocalyptic action in its purest form, and inspirations from the likes of Mad Max are clearly visible. There's enough violence and action to keep the adrenaline rush going, and the exploding heads and violent moments are simply terrific. The cast, consisting of Matthew Marsden and the gorgeous Christian Petrie, are appropriate in their respective roles. The plot isn't the strongest asset of this movie, but it manages to make up for such shortcomings with plenty of jaw-dropping action sequences. The camera work is nice, and some interesting angles make for an interesting view. Overall, this is one surprisingly successful post-apocalyptic action comedy that you won't want to miss out on. Wolves 2014. Caden Richards is a young teenager who has some disturbingly violent nightmares. When his parents are murdered, he sets out on his own without a purpose. However, soon he meets a weird man, Wild Joe, and learns about his identity. In order to find out more about his history, he sets off into the ominous town of Lupine Ridge. But is Caden the one searching for his heritage, or is someone searching for him? This is one of the modern takes on the well-established werewolf mythos, and the makers are pretty serious about the execution. You'll find this to be somewhat like an R-rated version of Teen Wolf. Even though the plot is somewhat predictable, the charismatic characters add to the fun. As far as the acting performances are concerned, the chemistry between Merritt Patterson and Lucas Till is rather charming, 
There are some exciting fight scenes that will keep you on edge. The only shortcomings are in the form of the effects that obviously can't match up to big budget flicks. However, the prosthetic werewolf makeup isn't exactly disappointing and is enough to get the job done. This film was the directorial debut for David Hayter, and he does a great job coupled with a powerful cast, including the likes of Jason Momoa and Lucas Till. You could point out several flaws with this movie, but it's still better than the likes of Twilight. I'm gonna sleep in your bloody carcasses tonight! Ah! Hobo with a Shotgun 2011 A ragged homeless vagabond turns up in a new city and is disgusted with the rule of crime. He turns into a vigilante and tries to fight his way against the crime boss's reign. The hobo knows only one way to justice, which is to take his 20-gauge shotgun and shatter the crooked cops and pedophiles in the city along with all the other scumbags. In order to make things better for the future, street justice is the need of the hour in this chaotic city. The concept is pretty intriguing, where we see a man from the streets rising up to take on the thugs. There's plenty of over-the-top violence that makes this film look like a parody of the movies it intended to pay a tribute to. As heads explode and guts fall all over the place, you're tempted to believe that this is just another shoot-'em-up exploitation flick. However, the movie is more than what the title suggests. Backed by an amazing performance by Rutger Hauer, who is eerily convincing in the titular role, the movie has more to the plot than random action sequences. The oddball tone of the movie and the random bursts of violence leave this unpredictable air around the film. Even with the low budget, this movie is vibrant, colorful, and has enough creativity to surprise the skeptics who start judging before watching the movie. There's fucking nothing you can do. The Bad Batch 2016 Arlen is left out in the middle of nowhere in a Texas wasteland that has been fenced off from civilization. As she tries to move through the challenging landscape, she is kidnapped by a band of cannibals who are led by a mysterious man. In a desperate attempt to survive, she makes her way to the dream and learns some important aspects of life. She discovers that being good or bad is fairly relative and depends largely on the person standing next to you. Can her newfound knowledge help her to escape unhurt from the situation? With a cast boasting of the likes of Jim Carrey and Keanu Reeves, you would expect nothing short of a smashing hit. While The Bad Batch might fall short in this regard, it still stands out as an engaging dystopian movie. The story is intriguing, and there are some interesting characters in the mix of things. With a female protagonist in trouble, cannibals making life tough, and some surreal moments, this film was set to be a rollicking hit. The only hindrance came from the unnecessarily slow pacing of the movie that makes things a tad… boring. There are times when the film tries too hard to be thought-provoking, but other than that, it is an entertaining watch. Death Race 2008 in a post-industrious world, a convict is forced to take part in a death race by a notorious prison warden. A lot is at stake in this event, where the winner has to brutalize and kill the opponents during the race. The convict, Jensen Ames, is promised freedom if he can come out the winner. However, as the race begins, he realizes that it might be a setup. Can he still emerge victorious and earn his freedom? If you want to enjoy this movie, don't concern yourself with the opinions of the harsh critics. 
The plot is a tad weak, but true to its title, the movie promises tons of heart-stopping action. You immediately start rooting for the convict who is wrongfully framed for the murder of his wife. Even in the middle of exciting, adrenaline-pumping action, the director spares time for character development of the individuals. The film is set in an Escape from New York-style dystopian prison culture, and there's nothing much original about the content. The execution, however, will leave you pleasantly surprised, and this film can lighten up your boring evening. Eight-Legged Freaks 2002 a freak accident causes a truck driver to accidentally drop a barrel of toxic waste in a reservoir. An exotic spider farmer collects crickets from the site to feed his spiders, and upon ingesting the toxins, the spiders grow in size and appetite. As the spiders grow to monstrous proportions, the inhabitants of the town are threatened. All that can stop the disgusting eight-legged freaks from destroying the town is a group of people, including the sheriff, Chris, and a few others who battle against these bloodthirsty beasts. This movie is a tribute to the monster features of the good old days. However, the special effects are definitely an improvement, even if they don't appear appealing compared to movies in 2020. The concept is entirely inspired by the creature features from the 1950s, and there are a lot of silly jokes and other campy moments to stay true to the spirit. The killer spiders are well made, and their behavior is often confusing. In a single scene, you'll see them behave like a mutant monster and a cartoonish creature. There are some crazy scenes, such as the battle between the spider hordes and the townsmen at the mall. The acting is pretty impressive, with a young Scarlett Johansson lighting up the screen and a powerful performance from David Arquette. You could classify this as a movie from the exploitation genre, but there's no denying the rollicking good time that's on offer. Right on my command! Open fire! Big Ass Spider 2013 A giant deadly spider manages to escape from a military lab and wreaks havoc in the city of Los Angeles. All attempts to eliminate the spider, including a mighty military strike, fail. And now the only hope lies with a few scientists and a smart exterminator. Unless they manage to kill the creature, the entire city is set to be destroyed. We've all enjoyed movies that explored the idea of a giant monster attacking cities. While Big Ass Spider is clearly an inherently funny film, it certainly is a cut above the conventional straight-to-video stuff that came before it. Not only does this film enjoy an innovative concept, but it's also backed by some sturdy performances from Lombardo Boyar, Ray Wise, and Greg Grunberg. The special effects in use might not be up to the standards of the Hollywood blockbusters, but they're still better than you would expect from such a low-budget outing. The spider is shown to be like a deadly predator, and its scary growl could make your blood run cold. The movie also takes a dig at the cliches that you would find in every creature flick. Most faults in the movie are compensated by the hilarious exterminator duo and their witty dialogue. You might anticipate this to be fairly ordinary, but we can assure you that it's much better than you would expect. It's like a goal, man. Psycho Goreman 2020 A young girl and her brother unearth a gem that resurrects an ancient alien overlord. 
They're amused by their magical amulet and make the monstrous entity obey their childish whims and fancies. It's all fun and games until they accidentally attract hordes of intergalactic assassins to their small town. As the action gets ugly, it becomes a massacre, the likes of which you have never seen. We must begin by saying that this movie is not for the squeamish or those who are easily offended by weird, dark humor. Another thing to note about the film is that although it's more of a kid's movie in terms of the story or the logic, it's certainly not intended for children. It is an intelligent script that promises a laugh every now and then. The acting performances are satisfactory, and the little girl is amusing to watch on screen. It's equally engaging to watch the bloodthirsty alien in action. There is a lot of gore, but the intention is not to shock you out of your wits. You might find this strange, considering this is a B-movie, but the image of gore in this case is strategically induced for the laughs. The weird costumes added to the goofy nature of the movie, and we particularly marveled at the walking bucket of corpses. Knuckles. Kung Fury 2015 Due to a series of events involving luck and divine intervention, the Miami police detective King Fury has gained extraordinary martial arts skills. Although he is the undisputed king of Kung Fu, a master criminal of all time Adolf Hitler assassinates one of his friends. Kung Fury goes back in time to take on the King Fuhrer, aka Hitler, and his fearsome Nazi forces. What will happen when the mighty forces are challenged by the fearless Kung Fury? The director and lead actor, David Sandberg, may be new in the film industry, but he surely knows the art of a perfect debut. The innovative idea of a cop coming from the future to battle it out with Hitler is sure to tickle your funny bone. This movie never takes itself too seriously and constantly attempts to pull off one hilarious moment after another. It's somewhat of an ode to retro games and electronics, and is also a tribute to vintage action movies from the VHS era. The fast-paced movie never allows a dull moment to creep in and the soundtrack is just perfectly suited for the theme. There is no dearth of entertaining content, as you have laser-shooting dinosaurs, kung fu, vikings with guns, and pretty much anything bizarre that you can imagine. Power-packed action sequences and over-the-top gore effects make things all the more exciting. This movie is available on YouTube for free, just in case you might want to check it out. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.